hello internet so nice to see you so we are here today okay it's a beautiful day at least here in canada and of course a beautiful day relatively speaking because i'm in canada so it's freezing cold okay so welcome to theory talk live i'm tomato zillia mystery for guitar.com and we are streaming live on youtube and facebook well let's see a moment who we have here in chat how oh, i see i hire straxical oh nigel N guys i don't know if you know this uh, this guy here nigel nigel is one of my personal heroes honestly and uh, are you all ready to express yourself on the guitar in an easy way? You came to the right place. Yes, Nigel, you came to the right place. And who we have in the chat? Mark Gonzalez. Hi, Mark. Conspiracy Media. I love your name. JJ, Michael Aguilar. Hello, guys. Nice to see you. Rafi Rodriguez, Daniel Nicoara. Hey, Daniel. So, hi, everybody. Nice to have you here. That's great to have you. And, you know, today, I want to talk, be talking about self-expression on guitar, exactly like Nigel was saying, okay? How to make your music more emotional, more personal, because after all, that's the game. No, I mean, why do we play music if we play what everybody else has played and the same way? So let's do some self-expression today, okay? And I'll be speaking today with a very special guest and he's an expert on blues guitar. Even more than that, he's an expert at teaching blues guitar, which is extra level okay and uh, because we all know that not all good musicians are good music teachers okay and it's always this to, to remember but in this case our guest has the whole package i'm talking about anthony reynard from belgium hi anthony hi tomaso thanks How for having today great hi internet <laughs> <laughs> sorry well welcome anthony so how's uh How's the weather there in Belgium? Because Anthony, guys, Anthony's from Belgium. Okay, no, it's not, it's not the That's a pretty Belgium. day. It's a pretty day. Very sunny. Good. So for Belgium, we can't complain today. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, good for you. So, okay, Anthony. So uh, you're an expert at blues guitar. Are you? I guess so. <laughs> That's the hardest exactly. question I'm going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me to us. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you are actually. Okay, so very good. Okay, uh, I think I go ahead and ask you some questions because I'm actually I'm actually curious of what they're gonna say about all this. So, okay, so go ahead. Anthony. Uh, well, for everybody else, so in this channel, in my channel, music34guitar.com, we talk about a lot about what to play you know what chords what scales what note what interval scale degree all this kind of thing i think though there is a, there is another thing as important and i talk about that every now and then but and the other thing it is as important if not more important and, and it is how we play those things and i call these phrasing you know things like <clears throat> bands vibrato hammer on pull offs uh, slide etc so anthony i want to know as a blues player how do you approach phrasing right. how how do you think about that what, do, what what do you think when you do all that good question so i think you can think about uh pink bunnies but of course you need to have like a structure in mind when you approach phrasing uh, my personal recommendation is like you can approach phrasing from multiple angles of course we can talk about the technical point of view, what are all the techniques I need to master to sound good, uh, or from a creative point of view, really. So like uh, you could ask yourself, how can I make my phrases sound better, more unique and so on. So what I found is that there are, there's a lot of info out there that talks about the creative aspect. For example, there's a lot of talk about less is more, as in try to play less, you'll sound better less notes that is and i don't necessarily agree with this i think this is a bit uh, of a shallow thing to say because what does it r really mean play less and is it really true that if you play less you'll sound better what about guitarists and like gary moore and steve ray Vaughan, to name a few that play long and often fast lines is their phrasing bad because they play more notes 
No, I don't think so, personally. So when talking about creative aspect, it's important to have a re to have really clear guidelines on what to focus on exactly. And what I've found is that if you tell a student to play less, that is often not the best thing to say, because what does it mean? It can mean multiple things. And the thing is that we need to be able as guitarists to also use silence to build tension in our guitar playing. But if I tell you or anyone use silence when you play again, it's still confusing for the most part. I'm not uh, able to communicate really, really uh, clearly if I say this. So what I found is that, of course, the quality of communication of the instruction and the clarity of uh, those things has an enormous impact on the results on the student side. And I know, of course, you know this as well. I use it that you're teaching yourself to master. But if, if I say to a student, use silence until it makes you uncomfortable, then we're getting uh, somewhere because the student might be confused about using silence, but he sure knows about being uncomfortable and probably also being un uncomfortable with silence, like for instance, when talking with a friend or a group of people. So now we have a crutch. I know we have an exercise that actually will get results, given that the technical aspect of phrasing also has also touched on, of course. And that is, uh, of course, that the technical point of view is also worked on, um, Tommaso. Yes, yes. It's, I, I like how you got straight for, for, for the truth there, like uh, about the less is more or less is better. No, it can be more <laughs> as long as your phrasing is good. I, I like I that because <laughs> the thing about less is more has been plagued the guitar world forever. <laughs> it's, right. That, uh, that, that is, you can, pretty, we all know about the thing that somebody asking the Malmsteen, uh, so less is more, <laughs> Malmsteen answer, how can less be more, more is more. And when this happened, I actually really appreciated Malmsteen because the number of notes has nothing to do with self-expression. It's your choice. Okay. Uh, I, I remember something that Mike Filipov was saying. I know you know Mike, Mike Filipov. I know well, maybe some people in the audience do not know Mike Filipov. Mike is a friend of ours and uh, he teaches mostly guitar technique. He's specializing in teaching technique. and um we were we were actually in chicago together all to go together and at a certain point mike told me something that like enlightened me that speed is an ornament speed is an element of phrasing <laughs> okay so it's like you play one note that you can put a vibrato on it but you can also put a scale before it <laughs> the point is still the note if you think about things this way it it sounds better as opposed to just play a scale for the sake of playing a scale but uh, by the way, Anthony, I'm loving everything you're saying right now. So it's and, and everything you say is true. The use of silence, <laughs> the student being uncomfortable, it's all, all true. Um, I would like to ask you if you have some example or some exercises you want to because to share with us, because um, if possible, I'd like the people in the audience to, to, to get something visual, because really I know cool. many of them will listen and understand them, but many of them will listen and will not get what you're saying right now because it's fairly advanced for some people. So if you could right. share something. So using silence to your advantage to build tension is big. So if you would approach it on the guitar um, and if you have some general playing things down already and you're able to play with scales and maybe even chord uh, phrases and stuff, it's really easy to overplay all of the time. And as we described a moment earlier, uh, and as Tommaso was saying also, sometimes you can play long lines and, and fast lines. And I love this kinds of stuff also. <laughs> this kind of playing also where you play a lot of things at the same time but sometimes especially in blues playing we need to build up tension and we can use silence uh, as well uh, in our techniques of um, phrasing elements as Tommaso described so um, fast and uh, long lines playing is only one part so if you for instance play something on the guitar instead of 
re really stringing things together, we can take them apart as really different components in our playing. So if you play any lick or any line that you improvise, one good idea that you might want to experiment with is just playing only a couple of notes out of that lick. lick. So just say that normally you would play a lick of 10 notes, like something like this. We can experiment with those licks, but we can cut them into really small fragments as well. So for instance, if, if I just play the first four or five notes from this lick, and just get a go with this and try to improvise with this, and then stop my line of notes, really, because that's what it is. If we play licks, we just play a line of notes. If we just cut it in the middle, for instance, and then stop playing, sometimes we, uh, we might discover uh, first uh, really new lines, have new licks, but also we might discover that we start to sound better at oftentimes. So it's also good to play long lines. Like, like this, no, I pasted them together also, those three licks that I played uh, with the silence in between before, but it's also important to play with the silence and to learn to control silence as an element to build tension in your playing. So I hope this clears up what we were uh, talking about just the other moment. I like it a lot. And uh, uh, for everybody in the audience, you guys are going to have a, re a replay of that video on my YouTube channel. So I suggest later you go back to this and you watch the heck out of the segment <laughs> because you want to transcribe all those phrases. I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay. And uh, see exactly what Anthony is doing because many of you guys don't realize, but Anthony just poured a lot of gold onto you guys. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it may not look like because it was going a bit fast. I mean, I, we don't want to stay here forever, but guys, go and watch back the segment. It's great. And yes, I agree on everything you say. Uh, Anthony, I have um, a couple of, uh, I have an interesting, a uh, couple of interesting comments here before we go on the next question. And I have a, one guy, uh, I have a Casey here. Let me see if I can uh, show the, it's a pretty long comment, but could you show an example of how to incorporate more chromatic phrasing on the fretboard without getting into theory in great depth, just show a couple of approaches on the neck. And now I was thinking, uh, since you're a blues player, there are all those uh, uh, chromatic blues leaks uh, like... Um... Now I'm going to be super, super self-conscious because Anthony has great guitar tone and I'm just improvising you. But, <laughs> okay, so, but uh, all the phrases like... Uh... And all this kind of thing. Can you, can you share a couple of those leaks? Uh, of your... I, I know you use them. I, I, I heard you play them. So... Could you share a couple of those licks just like that? Yeah, sure. And I think in the overall picture of what Casey is aiming for, he's probably thinking about more along the lines how you can, um, I think, make up your own chromatic lines. And I think it would be even more interesting if we go, could go into this stuff because I really play that also a lot. So. Um, the most, the simplest chromatic lick ever is to play. It's just to play every note on one string. And this is also something we can use at uh, sometimes, like if you want an easy approach at playing chromatic. And like Casey said, said, without going into much depth of the on the theory side, we have 12 notes on the guitar. Some of them are in the scale and the others are outside the scale. So we have the outside tones that we can use very good. Also, if we know how to uh, build and resolve tension. So one thing that I like to do is to play a lick. <laughs> And then add certain notes uh, and certain 
points uh, of the lichen that are from outside the scale by just sliding into that note. So for instance, if I do this on the second last note of this lick, this would sound like... But we can do it on practically every note. Just pentatonic lick, like a pentatonic sequence, but I um, play, I focused on playing the fret before the actual note, and I uh, I did a slide. I performed the slide into the actual note of the scale from an outside tone, and this gives an easy approach of how to play chromatic lines like. And of course, the, the last example that I played, uh, I um, used more techniques than only using this. Um, I used more outside techniques just as sliding my hand up uh, frets to here. But what you need to know about playing chromatic lines is the, the easiest part is just approaching the note from one fret below. You can even do one fret higher, uh, but I mostly do uh, the, the fret lower. And um, you can play any note on the guitar if you're improvising, as you, if you know how to resolve it. And you need to be uh, become comfortable with silence, as we were talking about just the other minute with the muscle. But you need to also become very comfortable with tension. And playing outside notes is a great deal of tension. But if you're able to juggle that tension um, and you don't fall onto your knees uh, with every outside tone you play, then you're able to play really cool chromatic things. So I hope this uh, gives you the some thing, uh, The thing about this, this, that I said about gold before, double that right now. <laughs> so, Anthony, I'm going to steal all your phrases. <laughs> it's gonna happen <laughs> so, and it's you guys should do the same you guys are you do the same uh the, the, this, this approach is great and i love it and I, I love the approach i knew it already but i love the approach i love how anthony is applying this approach to his phrases that's that's gold Thanks. anthony one thing i've noticed as a teacher myself is how foundational the blues is uh, for any kind of modern musician. I, I mean, if, if even just learning a few elements of blues uh, is, is great, beneficial for people who play rock, jazz, alternative, pop, all kind of modern music. Of course, it doesn't really apply to classical musicians because classical musician came before blues, so the new elements of blues are not present in there. Still, it's good to have this kind of control of the instrument, but definitely for any modern musician, it's important. Uh, I think more than one person said that the rock and metal, for instance, are just blues played really fast and really aggressively. Um, it's not technically true this way, but I mean, it's very close to reality, okay? So I'd like to know what would you recommend for people who have never approached blues before? So how can we start learning some blues? How can we get kind of a... How can we wash our guitar into the river of blues, okay, <laughs> and, and get this kind of juiciness from our phrasing? Nice, nice question. So for people who never approached blues playing before, I would recommend starting with all the same things you need to build your general knowledge of guitar playing and how the guitar works. Because as you just mentioned, Tommaso, blues is very foundational to any kind of modern music. So that's why if you build up your general skills as a blues guitarist, we can also learn to un understand really on a deep level other styles as well. For example, um, fretboard orientation, that's a really big topic and a really important topic as well. Being able to go up and down the fretboard, play all corners without hesitation, this is very important for guitarists of any style. 
But by understanding how to do it in the blues, it's very easy to also branch out to other styles, to rock, metal, jazz, and so on. So the same uh, holds true to rhythm playing. Um, that's, for example, really typical uh, in blues to play something like this. <laughs> If you play the same riff but more in a straightforward way with a straight rhythm, we're having an example of something that can be used and is used a lot in rock, hard rock uh, types of styles and we can even branch off from this to other uh, things as well if you apply a lot of uh, distorted sounds and if you apply some sometimes notes from the blue scale that are used a lot in metal or sounds from a combination of the blue scale and the minor scale if you know the cemetery gates riff uh, from pantera that's essentially minor scale with a uh, blue note and it's a great great riff but it, uh, if you understand the blues, you can branch off easily to other st styles as well. And I think a lot of people say like learning to play the blues in general is like learning a language. And I think this is true. And I would even go further and say learning to play the blues is like learning a universal language because you can use it to jam with ev anyone like everywhere in the world um, that you go. and it's actually a very fun thing to learn and a lot of things in the blues are cliche that's why people say it's a language it's a universal language i would add but still i think if you are extracting like this cliche things from it and you learn to integrate it in your own playing then you will also see how it relates to other styles as well so what is typical for the blues are the cliche licks and if you learn to translate them in your own playing, you can also, you know, go anywhere with it, to metal, to rock. And uh, for example, if you play here, a uh, typical three minor, uh, three string, sorry, arpeggio here, and E minor. So we're playing now three notes of the E minor arpeggio. In blues, we would play it uh, like this. Like, for example, the Steve Ray Vaughan intro. This is built of those two uh, notes on top of the E minor arpeggio. So in jazz, for instance, we would play it like this. Um, while in uh, metal, we would play it. <laughs> Like this and for a more advanced player we were we were talking about adding chromatic tones in there we could even go uh, play it like this and this is with the same three notes so we branched out from a blues lick to a jazz lick to a metal lick to I don't know what the last example was Fusion, maybe. So let's call it fusion. <laughs> when you don't know right. how to call it, always call so, it. So uh, let's check uh, the chat also. Um, yeah, if there was, are was, other was, questions. And I, I, yeah, I was, Chris is stating the blue sweeps. We have, um, of course, a lot of things, a lot of techniques that we can apply to blues playing from other styles, like the sweeping. It's not necessarily. Uh, something we do all of the time in blues but i found that learning techniques from other styles as well like sweep picking um, is really beneficial also for your blues playing and directional picking can also help your uh, general guitar playing as well so for people who are into this you might have seen me do do this for people who follow me on the youtube or taking lessons i i do Sweet picking also. It's a combination.
combination of sweep picking and directional picking here. So this is basically what I'm playing here uh, right now as a dominant seventh arpeggio. And I'm adding in some notes from the minor and the major pentatonic, but as you can see, the descending part of the arpeggio, I play it. helps with achieving a fluent sound which um, I think at least for me personally is really important to have this fluent sound in my playing where I can go if I were to pick everything this is a whole different sound Of course, some of these things come down to personal preference. But yeah, sweep picking can be applied, of course, to any style. And uh, learning from players and the rock and the metal is uh, a good idea, I think. Cool. I think most techniques can be applied and in, in most chat style. We have Donald also asking, hey, may I kindly share exercises? May you kindly share exercises that can enable me to play many strings when soloing because mostly I play on one string, then move to another afterwards. Um, I would say try to learn uh, your guitar, fretboard and different um, ways of, of looking at the fretboard. So not only what you're doing, Donald, is a great thing and playing horizontal. Uh, on one string is something I do also very often. But you also need to play horizontally and learn your scale position. And if you mix the two approaches together, you, you can't only play in one vertical position. But you can also play horizontally and mix those two approaches together. So hope hope this gives you some idea of what uh, to learn and what to focus on. All right, Anthony, cool. can you hear um, me? Tomaso, do you have other you things me, you Anthony? might add to the things we're talking about? No. Anthony, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, Tommaso. Anthony, <laughs> I know. I, I think we're. I know my voice is transmitted on YouTube. Error but... on Tommaso's side because I can't hear him. Yep. Let's check where he might be hanging on. If he's. Wait a second, you guys. Can hear me. Have a problem. Just a second. So, are you still there? Anthony, Anthony, can you hear me? Okay, Anthony, I'm sure on YouTube they can hear me. Uh, uh, let me do that. Hello, hello. Just a second, guys. I can't hear the master, so it's only you and me. Sure turn on your speakers. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure if he's talking or. Okay, guys, sorry There's for some the technical tag. error, probably. Okay. Let me see if I can communicate with, with Anthony through the chat. Oh, Daniel is saying we hear you both. Let me check exactly. if I can turn on the sound here on YouTube. Hope this gives. Can you hear me now, Anthony? Idea. Can you hear me now? It looks like we can't uh, communicate, says Casey. Yeah, I can't hear or even see the muscle. So, okay. <laughs> so, uh, like the chat says, a little glitch on okay. uh, the streaming part. Hmm. Okay, guys, it's not a problem because I can still communicate with Anthony okay. in another way. But so uh, just... let's uh, continue and um, 
we'll see if uh, things work out and on the technical part of the that's okay the live stream so if you have other questions you want to communicate something here you can put it in the chat and as soon as tomorrow I will put is them here, in the private chat you can so. also um, we can continue this Okay, so the next question I want to ask you, Anthony, and I'm writing it down, is that one thing I've heard over and over again is that people think that self-expression should come as spontaneous, but so they should not have to practice it because it's spontaneous. So, so um, let's go on to the things we wanted to talk about and the, the things that we wanted to talk about with, with, with you guys is... Uh, before everything turns uh, on the live stream to buggers um, is how you can um, be more self-expressive in your playing. And of course, as we all know, um, self-expression can be improved and practiced for sure, because some people might tell you, well, self-expression that needs to come as part of the creative process. You can't learn this. You need to have it. But if that's if that statement was correct, that it can be practiced, then nobody would ever need an education to become an actor, because you know that's the whole point of those people. Their education to become more self-expressed. So, in a perfect world, we could just take the same exercise and practices that actors are using in their education and translate this to music. But that's where like the physical limitations come into play because we as musicians have a much harder job to do than actors. Because if we want to translate what we feel into the physical world, we also need to take into account our mastership over the instrument. I hope I don't, uh, you know, have the actor's guilt against me by saying this, but you know, we have this whole thing, we want to be self-expressed on the guitar, but for instance, if your guitar technique isn't right there where you need to have it, then you can express anything you, you, you can express anything you want, but it won't really come out. So we were talking about phrasing the other minute. If your phrasing techniques aren't really developed, if you don't know how to do proper vibrato, or how to do string uh, band vibrato, to combine different techniques together, then you can be a really creative, self-expressive person, but it won't come out. And that's why I don't really agree with those people that say self-expression, uh, it can be learned. I think it can be learned. And, and in other words, you know, if you aren't able to express yourself fully, then the thing that we need to first look at is your technical limitations. And we need to, as musicians first, really master our instruments to state in other words, like Chris is uh, stating in the chat, in other words, build your chops. Yeah, build your chops, so the build a technical foundation as a guitarist. And we need to be able to master our instruments to match the level we need to be self-expressive on. And a lot of people get this wrong. They think that mastery is all, all about becoming a virtuoso and becoming very technically advanced guitarist. And sometimes that might be what it is, what you need and what you want, but it all depends on your goals as a musician, really. So if it's your goal to be self-expressive as a singer songwriter, you don't need to play scales at very fast tempos, but of course you need to know what scales are, what the most important scales you need for your style of music, how to play them, how to work together with chords and so on. And for people who want to play on a really technical demanding um, level, of course, then we need to look at certain exercises that will get you there and we need to train on this. And as the master said, I was thinking about the train image on his YouTube channel. So uh, if you're following Tomaso, you know what we're talking about, train and focus. So I would say first focus on your guitar technique to make sure your playing doesn't fall apart. If you want to express something uh, and then we have a question in the chat also for self-expression, improvisation. 
Are you using scale shapes, intervals, or are driven by ear? This is a great exercise. Thank you, Dimitrios. Um, the ear training is really important. Uh, ear training. So we practice scales in order to forget scales, but you need to constantly go back to those scales or otherwise your playing will become rusty again. So for me, guitar technique is like the ultimate foundation. You need your technique, otherwise you can be self-expressive, uh, like we said the, the other moments. But if you're a self-expressive individual with weak technique, that self-expressiveness isn't worth a lot. So uh, I think ear training is a really big part of it also, so you're, that you're able to play what's in your mind and ear training is also actually a progress accelerator, so to speak, because then you're able to learn stuff by ear instead of solely relying on tablature or notation. And I would say uh, when we're talking about improvisation, yes, a lot of it, it comes down to learn your scales in order to forget them. And not only scales, but everything you need to know, the intervals, the arpeggios, learn to know your fretboard inside out. So you don't have to think about this if you're improvising. So then um, you can focus more on ear on your ear. A lot of people don't do this. They they don't focus on really critical aspects uh, like rhythm playing, um, and that's what I call the foundational levels of blues guitar mastery. Are uh, in my um, in my opinion, uh, guitar technique. We have ear training and we have rhythm. And if you focus on these, uh, and frankly, most people have this upside down. They focus solely on scales, lead guitar playing, playing fast. But what they need is technique to build their ear and their rhythm chops. And of course, some lead guitar playing as well. But it should be all practiced and balanced. balanced. So, um, to make things more concrete, an exercise you could do is this. Um, try to, for instance, sing a lick from a guitarist you like by just listening and then singing it. Um, and try to sing the lick first and then try to play it. So this is because if you're able to sing what you hear and play what you sing, there's nothing you won't be able to play by ear. Uh, but for most people, this is exercise is already a uh, bit difficult probably so at first try to focus on singing what you play learn your scale so you can forget them i like it thanks james um so singing while you play is a really good exercise to improve your improvisation and it's something i do a lot like i i tend to gravitate towards what we were talking about the other minute, learning things in order to never need, to never think about them again when you're improv improvising. So when I'm improvising, I'm less concerned about where to go on the fretboard and all the scale um, fingerings, because I know I have these things down. That's, that's why we practice. I know that we have this level cleared I can think about other stuff like the self-expressive exercises we were talking about the earlier moment. I can think more about how I want the message to come across, so to speak. And yes, it comes a lot from ear training also to be able to say, uh, for instance, if I play... So I'm able to sing what I play, but I'm also making more musical choices in this way because I'm thinking not uh, about technique, I'm not thinking about where to go on the neck of the guitar, I'm thinking more like a bird is probably thinking about like when he, um, when he sings a song, um, more on the musical side of things. Uh, this is like the uh, one of the things you want to achieve as a musician that you're not uh, able anymore to think all of the time where to put your fingers or you're playing mistakes and you need to look down. Oh no, I played mistake. So we have all of this 
clutter out of the window so we can focus solely on the music. So that's a great question uh, about the improvisation. Uh, oh, cool, thanks. Why does the mass society reappear once in a while and disappears again? Uh, I have I have talked about the mass. Um, I have talked about this with him, and I think it has something to do with his accent. Because if you were if you were at one of our last streams, then we were talking about who has the thickest accent, and I think the is a bit shy because he didn't practice cleaning up his accent for today so maybe that's why look who's doesn't talking come yeah. <laughs> online so it's hard for me to say because i only see a black screen when looking at tomaso's side of the window might have something to do with the, the live streaming software we're on seems to be a little glitch but uh... <laughs> all right yes, let's yeah. look at the chat nigel says the birds in my garden sing along to master of puppets daily Nice, cool. Metal fan says technical issues. Show must go on. Nice. All right. So we had Donald his question about the exercise that can enable you to play on many strings when soloing, because mostly he was playing on one string and then moved to another afterwards. It's a good idea to play on one string, actually, like I said before, and we can do, uh, we can go even along the lines of playing on one strings, uh, on, on one string simul, uh, sorry, on two strings simultaneously. So playing on every string separately is a really great thing to practice. But uh, of course, we can even extend this to play a group of three notes over two strings. So for example, if I play on the minor pentatonic scale over here, so here um, at the fifth fret, we have the fifth and the eighth fret on the B string, we can make it a group of three notes. If we incorporate the seventh fret also, that's on the G string. So we have this going on. And this group of three notes can be applied to other shapes on the guitar of the minor pentatonic scale as well. So and that's something you see in a lot of players, their uh, guitar playing, Gary Moore, Joe Bonamassa use this a lot. They don't play vertically in one position. Oftentimes they don't only play horizontally, uh, of course they, they can do that, but they play on multiple strings simultaneously. And so these are great things to incorporate in your own playing. Find a group of three notes over two strings, for example, and then try to shift them up in every position. And because the B string is tuned differently in relationship to all the other strings on the guitar, it's easy to do because it lays really easily under our fingers, those patterns. But on other strings, it, you might find it to be more difficult to uh, play, for instance, this. That's why I personally try to come up with solutions for this and even uh, sometimes try to play, uh, incorporate notes from outside the minor pentatonic scale to form fingerings that are easier. And it's also a bit more creative than just following a pentatonic pattern, one scale up and down. We can, for instance, do this instead of, so it's an, it's easier under the fingers, even though this note is from the major pentatonic scale and not from the minor pentatonic scale. So now we have sort, sort of a hybrid form three note pattern that uses notes from minor pentatonic and major pentatonic as well. And 
And so when I run through those patterns, I make sure that my fingers have a great, great time also. So if the, you know, the patterns of thought behind this makes my fingers uh, go into multiple directions simultaneously, I try to come up with runs or ways to go on the guitar that make it make uh, it easier for my fingers and also sometimes it's more creative to be thinking along those lines as well all right cool cool so yeah this is uh, the ebook that you'll find on my website the free downloadable ebook so you can get it for uh, free if you go to best blues guitar lessons online.com slash blues rhythm guitar and you can download the ebook there. It's filled with rhythm playing examples typical for blues playing. Um, if you're into chord phrasing or you want to delve into chord phrasing, this is uh, designed especially for this. And if you don't know what chord phrasing is, it's basically how to phrase with chords. So if you know how to play chords, and you know how to play riffs and uh, lead parts, now we can do things simultaneously. So if this is your thing and you want to delve into it, get the ebook. There's a lot of examples at the tablature and you'll find it on my website, bestbluesguitarlessonsonline.com. So I would say thank you for being here. And even though we had some technical issues, I hope you had a great time. And this is not, it doesn't finish here because I have a free book for you two guys. And this, this is this, it's a blues, uh, not blues, of course, that's Anthony. This is a beginning music theory free ebook. You find it at the link below. If you guys want to know, I want to have any refresher on your basic music theory and believe me music theory is mostly basics you get the basics right you get the music theory right if instead you are well beyond that then i'm just going to quote a comment if i can find it again which is this one and if you have any voids in your harmony knowledge i really recommend complete chord mastery that helped me tremendously complete chord mastery is one of my courses you can find it on my website if you want to know more about all that just go on my website or send me an email and that's it um and like people were saying right now is that uh, um just a second i have a lot of comments here that like somebody was saying here that youtube can only take so much cool at the same time and all the coolness it was now stole by Anthony so of course you could not see me anymore and that's probably also why Anthony cannot see me because he's too cool and then all my uh, my video my audio on on his computer becomes obscured by his coolness and that's completely Anthony's fault I'm gonna be shameless shamelessly give all this the fault of this to Anthony coolness because he's just too cool for YouTube and for Facebook and that should tell you a lot about how good this guy is very good guys so uh really glad to have all of you here and um just a second here. Yeah, yeah. Really glad to have all of you here. Thank you for coming. And again, go back at the beginning of this uh, uh, video and transcribe all of Anthony's phrases because they were just absolutely great. Absolute goal there. You guys want to get this. And this is is for today Music Theory Talk live. Until next time, guys. Enjoy. <laughs>